The Backyard Brawl is one of the best-named rivalries in college sports. Dating back to the first matchup in 1895, these two schools separated by a mere 75 miles have always played each other competitively, whether it be on the football field or the basketball court. The football side of this rivalry has been dormant since West Virginia's departure from the Big East after the 2011 season, depriving us of many great matchups, most notably a 2016 matchup which brings us here, to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at the 2016 West Virginia Mountaineers, led by dual threat quarterback Skyler Howard, that would finish the season 10-3 and, and ranked 18th in the final AP poll, take on the hometown 2016 Pittsburgh Panthers, led by the backfield of quarterback Nathan Peterman and running back James Conner, who would finish the season with a record of 5 Will West Virginia live up to the national ranking, or will Pittsburgh prevail? Let's find out. Pittsburgh would kick off, and it would be a short one. Shelton Gibson would catch it at about the 10, and go right down the right side of the field, following his blocking, before breaking some tackles and bouncing outside. There would be a flag on the field, but Gibson would keep running, taking it all the way to the house. Unfortunately, the flag would be for clipping, negating the return. Skyler Howard would come out to pass on first down, but there'd be tight coverage downfield, causing him to improvise and he'd shed a tackler and power the way across the line for the first. With the new set of downs, Russell Shell would get the carry, and he'd go right up the middle, breaking a tackle and picking up nine. Two plays later, Howard would find Robert Dowdy for the first, and more, as he'd pick up 11. Shell would then get the carry again, taking it to the right, and picking up a good chunk of yards. On second down, he'd take it right up the middle, through a hole, picking up 12. Two plays later, Howard would keep it on a read option, and get outside to set up a third and inches. On third and inches, Shell would get the handoff and get past the first, and then finish the run by driving himself into the red zone. Three plays after that, on third and eight, Justin Crawford would get the handoff, but he'd be stopped well short of the first. And with that, they'd be forced to kick this field goal on fourth down to take a 3 0 lead. Their defense would then get a stop, bringing up this Pittsburgh punt. It'd be a short line drive, allowing Gary Jennings to catch it uncontested. He then quickly make his way into Panther territory, before eventually being dragged down at their 40. Plus, he'd be able to tack on a face mask penalty. Howard would then come out slinging, hitting Gibson over the middle to get inside the 10. Two plays later, Howard would call his own number, on a scramble, to make it 10-0 Mountaineers. Pittsburgh will not go down without a fight though, as Nathan Peterman picks up good yardage on this option keeper, also drawing a flag. And it'd be a face mask, adding an additional 15 yards to the run. Two plays after that, they'd run the option again, this time pitching out to Connor, and he'd make several men miss, as he goes all the way for the score. But hold on, there's a flag on the play. Oof, and it is for clipping, negating the touchdown play. On 3rd and 15 though, Peter would throw a dart to Dantes Ford, on the sideline, for 20, getting a first. Two plays after that, Peterman would call his own number on a read option, and get the first, and then carry a West Virginia defender into the red zone. Two plays after that, Connor would go right up the middle, setting up a first and goal inside the five. And on the very next play, he'd find Pater. West Virginia would then get the ball back, but be faced with an early third down. But Howard would have loads of time, and he'd find a wide open Javon Durant streaking down the sideline to get up right near the Pittsburgh red zone. However, they would quickly find themselves in another third down, and despite Howard having multiple wide open receivers, he'd just straight up miss them, bringing up a fourth down. Dana Holgerson is not concerned though, as on fourth down he trots back out his offense, and Howard would hit his man underneath, who then power his way past the marker for the first. Two plays after that, into the second quarter, Howard would find his way into the end zone yet again. We now go to the ensuing kickoff, where it'd be a short one, as Avante Maddox catches it at about the 10. He'd then follow his blocker straight forward, and hardly even have to change his direction, as he just runs 92 yards straight forward to keep it a 4 point game. Their defense would then get a stop and leave their offense in a good situation, as Peterman would keep the drive alive, finding Quadri Henderson for 17 on 3rd and 10. Two plays after that, Connor would get a run outside to the right for 5. And on 3rd and 3, Peterman would take this read option right up the middle, through his blockers, completely untouched until crossing the plane for the touchdown. But hold on, there's a flag on the field. Ugh, and it is for clipping, the second for their offense negating big touchdown runs. No problem though, as on 3rd and 1, Quadri Allison would go right up the middle for the first and more, driving himself to the West Virginia 15. Connor would then get the handoff, bouncing out to the right, to get to about the 10. 
he'd then get it again, following pretty much the same running route before being pushed out at about the one inch line. Peterman would then finish off the drive with his arm, finding a wide open Scott Orndorff for the score and the lead. Their defense would then come up huge again, getting them back the ball with just under a minute left, as Peterman would find Ford over the middle for 8. He'd then drop back again, this time finding Henderson on the sideline for 13. On the next play they'd look to pass again, and Peterman would locate Zach Challensworth deep over the middle to get to the Mountaineer 30. Two plays later, after an incompletion, Peterson would find Ford over the middle, but he'd be short of the first. This would allow one last shot at the end zone, and Peterman would have loads of time. He'd then find Ordenov short, who'd spin his way out of a tackle and stay on his feet, then break another and finally cross the goal line, with just two clicks remaining. Pittsburgh would then get the ball to start the second half, but quickly go nowhere, and the same seems to be going for West Virginia as they face a third and ten. But Howard would then rocket a perfect pass down the middle to pick up the first and more, getting all the way to the Pittsburgh 30. Shell would then get the handoff and go right up the middle, picking up 13 and getting into the red zone. Three plays after that, and faced with another third and ten, they dial up a screen pass, and though it should have been stopped, Crawford would keep his feet in bounds on a shove and make his way downfield for the first, and on the very next play he'd finish off the drive, taking it in for the touchdown. Pittsburgh now comes out looking to chew clock, but still score, as Connor takes his handoff to the right for seven. He'd then take another one, this one to the left, for nine. They'd then dial up an option, and the pitch would go out to Connor, who'd find the corner and pick up 17. On the next play, he'd go right up the middle, but only pick up a couple. But that might have been because he was dragged down by his face mask, tacking on 15 yards to the run. Three plays later, it is now Pat Narduzzi's turn to be aggressive, as Peterman comes out passing on fourth down inside the red zone, instead of kicking the field goal. He'd find Jester well short, and he'd luckily just barely get the ball across the line for the first. And three plays after that, Peter Moon would find Henderson at the back of the end zone for another Panthers touchdown. Their defense would then come up huge, getting their offense back the ball up 11, as Connor goes up the middle for 8. He'd then go up the middle again to close out the third quarter, this time picking up 11. And to start the fourth, they'd come out passing, as Peterman hit the man on the sideline for the first. He'd then drop back and find Henderson over the middle, on a slant, picking up 15. They'd then stay passing as Peterman finds Challingsworth over the middle for 9. Two plays later, Connor would get the handoff and pick up 9, and the first. And three plays later, Peterman would find another target at the back of the end zone for his fourth passing touchdown of the day. West Virginia would make a run at it late, but it'd be too little too late, as they were upset by the hometown Pittsburgh Panthers, 42-37, in the 2016 rendition of the Backyard Brawl. Thank you all for watching this episode of Missed Matchups. If you have a rivalry game from 1995 to the present that was not played due to scheduling but would like to see it played, please leave it in the comment section below. Remember, if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave a dislike. And if you have not, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Bye.